Good evening. Welcome to our press conference for Address the Build a Trilogy on behalf of the partnership of the FSC Foundation and Yearwood Center. My name is Dirk Miller. I'm the president of the FSC Foundation along with Eugene Campbell, chairman and CEO of Yearwood Center. And our purpose here is uh, to raise the awareness, not only funding for teen development such as the Teen Center, the IXL program, and our newly formed program, which is the Targets program, which is a teen development program that stands for teens to basically tools to advocate responsibilities and, goal, and goals to encourage teens to succeed. Uh, the age group on grade point average basically goes from seventh grade up to 12th grade. And we have some teens here from the Yearwood Center, basically on behalf of Eugene Campbell, we explain the responsibilities of the teens and the purpose of getting the awareness out for not only moral support, but financial support for you, it's uh, Eugene. Uh, thank you, Dirk. Um, again, I'm proud to be associated with the FSC Foundation, and we are happy to announce that we are celebrating the first full year of our Teen Center program. We have served over 1,000 youth, 450 through job training, and have been actually successful in placing 150 teens ages 13 to 19 in employment opportunities. We've been able to place about another 100 students in internships. Today, I'm joined with three members of the Teen Center program who are also here with us to help celebrate this opportunity. What we're doing today is simply asking the community to come out and support us on the uh, Thrill, the uh, Dress the Thrill event on December the 31st here at the Hilton. And the purpose of the event is for us to create teen stipends that we can continue to employ these young people from the community. The young people here today, they are provided tutorial and academic assistance as well as career exploration. But once again, I'm very pleased to be associated with the FSC Foundation, which is one of the premier civic organizations in the community. And with that said, I'd like to just take a moment to have one of our, a couple of our young people introduce themselves and just say a lot about their involvement at the Yearwood Center. Norman? Uh, um, my name is Norman Latour, and um, I currently attend the Yearwood Center. And um, uh, what I do at the Yearwood Center is uh, I mentor the kids, I help them do the homework after school, and um, as well, um, I can help them through my resume and of uh, my work too. Thank you. Sandra? Well, my name is Sandra. Basically, I come to the Yearwood Center to try to basically a little more, get a little more skill based on the real world because I had no idea how to really perform at it. And they gave me instructions, they gave me work employment, they gave me help that otherwise I would not get. And I also tried to do my best to basically show that I'm very grateful for that. And um, that's about it. Thank you. And my name is Dalton, I'm a <coughs> sophomore at the Academy. I just want to go to the year where I help serve snack. I serve over, in the summer I serve over 350 kids. And I help whatever it is to be helped in the young center. My name is Shateria. My name is Shateria Waj. And while at the year with center, I help, I help work with the kids. I help them with their homework. I also help Ms. Campbell and Ms. Siobhan with filing and putting papers away. And while I here with Center, in the summer, I was started working with Ms. Stanton so she could help me get into college. I started working on my resume and college essays, so I made college. And I had a really good time with the Yearwood Center, they helped me a lot. They kept me on track, helped me do better in school. Basically what we're trying to get people to understand is that uh, Yearwood Center is over a 60 year, uh, pretty much uh, not only a landmark, but something that's been in our community for so long. And what we don't want to do as a community is forget not only advocates such as myself who hasn't lived in the Stanford community for 18 years, forget where we came from, forget where the culture came from, 
And what we want to do is bring back the culture of development and learning to our youth. In regards to retrospect of what I'm saying, in this uh, situation, we do have uh, programs that we're going to implement with the U.S. Center besides the Targets program. Uh, we're going to implement a health and wellness activities program called Just for Kicks, which is a <coughs> health and wellness pro program for a term that basically kicking bad habits towards good health, what we're trying to get parents in the community to uh, not only eat right, but be the influence for kids to eat right, exercise, so on and so forth, diet, and um, get regular annual checkups, so on and so forth. Uh, with the uh, rise of child obesity and juvenile diabetes in our community, that's another uh, learning point besides the educational aspect. What we need to understand is <coughs> we need to have textbook sparks textbook smarts, but we also got to have uh, household smarts in regards to how our parents are related to our children on a day-to-day -day basis. And <clears throat> our next program that we want to do for sports is called an AAU America, basically called AAU America. Uh, a lot of kids who are out on the streets, who are playing basketball or baseball, so on and so forth, who are basically talented, but their parents can't afford uh, the $600, $700 tuition to play and what we're trying to do is get companies like Adidas or Nike or, or Reebok to basically sponsor us with uniforms so on and so forth and go to an actual dealership and get a van to take some of the kids out of the community keep them from getting in trouble and basically have hidden skills that nobody know about being showcased throughout the Northeast region. And our final actual uh, program that we want to also implement is called the Power One Scholarship. Uh, Power One basically getting people in the community to help each other instead of waiting for uh, the government due to budget cuts and corporations not really helping the community like they should. This is why this pretty much this uh, event is where we are right now. To basically get people in the community to donate a dollar, starting from a dollar all the way up to like ten thousand dollars. And uh, the dot basically, if you donate a thousand dollar scholarship it will bear the name of the person that donated. So if we do it ourselves, uh, if you think about the population that's in the state of Connecticut alone, just donating one dollar. You see us cutting these checks for a thousand dollars per student or ten thousand dollars per student. They see where that little dollar, you know, that dollar is going because you're making progress when people are being interested in helping a child that needs to go to school. The tuition, is the, the financial aid is not in place like it used to be. Uh, Fannie Mae is cutting back on giving to, uh, to our youth. So we have to do it ourselves. Every stop we went in today, somebody was saying there's no money. Yeah, exactly. That, you know, everybody is saying that there's no money. There is money. If people go to work every day, you can't tell me that the average person in the community, you never know. I might be helping out somebody's uh, niece. I might be helping out somebody's nephew, sons and daughters or somebody's grandchild go to school. But the only way that can happen is if we do it ourselves. If we do it ourselves, we will make progress within each other's progression as a community. Um, to have someone to, like Dirk Miller who has his own business, his own family, to take this kind of interest and ask for nothing in return is something that we really need to all treasure. I mean, he's here working, raising money, for a cause to serve the community and ask them for nothing in return. Listen, so when we ask you to do community service, you say, well, why do I need to give something back? Here's an example. He's successful. He's moved on. His daughter is grown. But he still, I need to reach Please back and figure out what I need to do to help people. So this is the example. This is what a real mentor does. A real mentor doesn't just talk. The mentor sets the example, right? Exactly. If you can't find the example, be the example. Yeah, exactly. All right? Okay, uh, last thing I just wanted to say, one again, want to thank the FSC Foundation, but one of the things that we wanted to talk about is the event itself. If we have not made plans, this is a good time now to go to the FSC Foundation website and purchase your ticket for the New Year's Eve event at a very affordable $85 uh, per person that will support the Yearwood program. Again, want to thank everyone. If they need more information, they can contact Dirk Miller directly at the FSC Foundation. Thank you. Understand that Dress the Thrill the Trilogy is our third annual event. Uh, please, by all means, uh, go to www.
www.fcfoundation.org. Click on the news and events page to get your tickets. And also, the Hilton Hotel has rooms for $99. And if you want to listen a radio promotion, you can go to 107.5 WBLS starting December 19th. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.